When you talk about legends of the Battle of Alberta, Mr. Kiprios, you can't complete any combo without the name of our next guest. He's a Hockey Hall of Famer. He's a five-time five Stanley Cup winner. Name one of the 100 greatest players of all time. And you can currently see his number in the rafters and on Mike Smith's mask. It is Grant Fuhr. Grant, thanks for jumping on and doing this. We appreciate it a lot. How are you? Things are good, thanks. How about you guys? Very good, very good. I got to ask, is watching this series brought back some memories for you? You know what? The Battle of Alberta is always fun to watch. I think that's the fun part. I mean, it hasn't been as mean as I thought it would get yet, but I have a feeling that might change. Yet. Grant, you had a pretty good view of a, a, of a special hockey player in your heyday, um, and, and you watch teams this time of year try to control them, try to intimidate them, get them off the score sheet. Uh, when you watch McDavid and maybe what Calgary has to do to stop him, I, I got to think the comparables have got to be pretty close. Oh, I'd agree with you. I mean, I think that's the one thing. He's kind of the catalyst of what makes Edmonton go. And for Calgary to be successful, they're going to have to find a way to disrupt that. And so far, they haven't been able to do that. Did you think we would get to a point where we were, because I honestly, I didn't think we would ever get to the point where we would talk about guys in the same class as Mario and Wayne again. Like, are we fair to put McDavid in that bracket? And did you think we would get to this point? I wasn't sure I would see it in my lifetime, but you know what? He's kind of in that category. I mean, there's still a little ways to go. I mean, Wayne and Mario have both been successful. They both got cups. But he's making everybody around him better. And I think that's kind of my vision of a superstar is that you've got to make the players. Well, looks like we've frozen. Around. There we go. Oh. Let's see if we can sort this out with uh, Mr. Oh, there it is. I think I think we're back. I think you froze for a second there, Grant. But uh, you're back with us and, and in full effect. So we'll continue on. Hey, I, I mentioned uh, Mike Smith's mask. Did you know he was going to put your name and number on his mask? I didn't, but it's actually kind of cool. So I still get to live in the Battle of Alberta. Now it's just vicariously. <laughs> when we look at uh, what's around Connor McDavid, uh, is it even more remarkable what he's been, been able to do? Because, you know, we, Wayne was Wayne. There's no question about that. But we're also talking about historically one of the best defensemen in the history game and Paul Coffey. Uh, Curry, of course, uh, and, and yes, Dreisaitl has been unbelievable. But outside of that, you know, it, it does drop significantly when you talk about uh, building a talent pool around Connor McDavid. Who is the key guy for you outside of Dreisaitl that's really helping Connor McDavid right now? Uh, you know what? I think the addition of Hyman's been really good. I think adding a Vander Kane has given them a little bit more bite. And he's got some offensive skill to go with that. So, to me, those are the two biggest acquisitions that have made them more of a complete team. Uh, how, I mean, we were talking about this earlier. We feel like it might be a seven-game series. And there's a goalie on the other side who's nominated for the Vesno Award. But it seems like, um, you know, the Oilers have had Jacob Markham, Markstrom's number. Did you ever feel when you were playing that there was just a team that had your number? Like, it's hard to believe that a guy that's been this good for this long this year, struggling this much in this series, did, did it ever feel to you like someone just had your number? Uh, you know what? It can happen at times. And there are certain teams. I used to struggle a little bit with Chicago. But at the same time, it can change in a heartbeat. So it's, it's something that when you have a guy doubting his confidence a little bit, you want to continue with. Because if he has that one good game, it can turn everything around very quickly. Hey, Nick and I were just, uh, we're just talking about uh, goalie contact around <laughs> this time of year. And we were, <laughs> we were talking perhaps a little bit about uh, Jordan Biddington and, can uh, I do this? and Nazem Kadri. And, can I do this? Yeah, sure, sure. Fierzy, yeah. I thought I was out of the woods, man, with St. Louis <laughs> Blue fans. And it's buried. It's water under the bridge. And then Kadri gets me in all this hot water again by making contact with Bennington. And I'm like, uh oh, here we go again. <laughs> Did you know you... What? It's playoff time, and your goalies get run into in the playoffs. That's just the name of the game. Nobody means to hurt anybody. It's just the fact that you bump into goalies, you talk to goalies, you fall on goalies, especially if they're playing well. 
I mean, that's the that's a one of it's the sign that you're actually doing something right is when guys want to bump into you and talk to you. So it's part of the game. Unfortunately, it happens. Do you think they uh, do you think they need to do more to protect those keepers a little bit? I mean, uh, we were just watching the video of that. You know, perhaps uh, perhaps more people need to step in here. Uh, you know what? If it's a little meaner around the net, guys don't get to fall on the goalie as much. But 100% at the same time, true. And uh, listen, I, I mean, I paid the price with Pronger and, and those type of guys. And I also had to answer to a, a, a guy named Tony Twist as well. Um, <laughs> ultimately, you know, the game changes in so many ways. But that part of the game, I think, Grant, will always be around. Would you agree with that? You know what? I agree with you totally. And it's always going to be a part of the game. I mean, if you look at the Bennington one, that one's he's chasing a rebound and there's a defenseman there. And yeah, if you're going to take if the opportunity is there to have the defenseman kind of tie you up a little bit and you've got a chance to crash the net, you're going to crash the net. One, you're looking for a rebound. Two, yeah, if you can create a little havoc around the net, you're going to do that. That's part of playoff hockey. You know, the, the good part about I don't know if you followed the storyline, but allegedly Bennington threw a water bottle <laughs> at, at, um, at Naz, and uh, I, I can't recall you ever throwing anything at me, so I, I, I thank you for that. You know, it's one of those things where you understand the game a little bit, and do you like things like that that happen? No, but does it happen? Yeah, it is, and it'll happen from now till the end of eternity it's playoff hockey it doesn't matter what the league does to try to protect that that's just the way playoff hockey is and the further along we go there's going to be more collisions with goalies every game's going to have one somewhere so but it's, it is what it is that, that's awesome uh before we let you go uh i love the reminiscing though i, I know you're doing some coaching with the three ice league think Big three for hockey, barnstorming across the United States, stops in London and Quebec City. Three-on-three three hockey league should be some fun, especially because you don't have to play in that, eh? Uh, you know what? It'll be a lot more fun standing behind the bench, but I'm kind of a still an old-fashioned guy. I like offensive hockey, so if the games are 6-5, five, 5-4, five, I'm good with that. Well, what made you want to get involved in something like this? Uh, you know what? Craig Patrick asked me if I'd be interested and I enjoyed coaching. So it's a way for me to get back into the game and have some fun with it. And it's the best side of the game. It's the offensive side. Uh, for those who want more info, three, the number three, ice.com. That's three, ice.com. Listen, Grant, uh, this was great catching up with you. Appreciate you doing this and, and sharing the smiles. Always a pleasure. Eventually, Kipper, they're going to let you off the hook. <laughs> Thanks, Fierzy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Have you let them off the hook? I have. All right, all right. So if, if Grant's done it, then the rest can do Listen, it. Listen, if, if he didn't let me off the hook, yeah. I'd be on an island somewhere <laughs> just retiring. And, and like, in all honesty, yeah. uh, Grant has been unbelievable in terms of uh, talking about it and uh, trying to explain people about, about the game this time of year. And uh, he's been a perfect gentleman. I can't thank him enough. Awesome. Appreciate you, Grant. Pleasure, guys. Take care.